Welcome to the professor's channel. It's been a while since uh, I've given you guys an update uh, on the uh, United States versus uh, Alex uh, Alexander. So today I want to let people know that uh, a couple of things. Number one, the case is still ongoing. Uh, as I've said before, this is the, the time where they're conducting discovery and the government's preparing his case. Now, remember that I told you that there were, there's also a civil case against uh, against him. And that civil case, they were conducting discovery, but those discovery they were sharing with uh, Iti Alexon. The government, the prosecutor, didn't want that. So they moved to try to shut down that sharing in, uh, uh, agreement. So Mr. Alexon is not getting that information until the time comes for him to get it. The court obviously have a trial date schedule, which is a control date usually get pushed back. So unless Mr. Alexan takes a plea, I don't see this case going to trial sometime during the summer, okay? So meanwhile, everything stays the same. His bail conditions stay the same. The government is actually working with uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, federal regulators to try to get a list of all the investors, of all the people who invested and that list will be published. So I'm telling all of you, okay, that if you don't want your name to be made public as an investor with MNEFX, you have the right to um, send a letter to the prosecutor and say, look, we don't want our name uh, made public. The uh, government said that those information will be on the website of the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District. So if you go to that website, you know, this is where that information will be. The last time I looked, they haven't posted uh, anything yet. But so far, let me tell you that a few, week, few weeks ago, uh, Eddie Alexson had a court date, and I have seen some uh, reports on social media, some email and text that, were, that somebody sent, obviously someone who is supporting Eddie Alexander or who's, uh, who's helping him uh, send these uh, email, I mean, this particular email, which I think was misleading because at this point in the litigation, in the criminal litigation, there is a, there's no decision as to whether uh, Eddie Alexander is innocent or guilty. The government is preparing its case. The government is getting all the evidence. They can't, they're gonna come a time when the government has to share those or uh, whatever evidence that they have with Eddie Alexander's attorney, but that time is regulated by federal law. So the government doesn't necessarily want Eddie Alexander to get that evidence too early, or at least to know what kind of evidence the government is relied on too early. So that would put him as a disadvantage in terms of preparing his defense. But he will get it in due time. And of course, uh, this is something that the government cannot walk away from. So, uh, but in terms of the case itself, do not listen to people who are sending email and propaganda and saying uh, that uh, he went to court and the government didn't have any evidence. The government is not providing any evidence now. This is not the phase of the trial of the case where the government has the duty to provide evidence. There will be a trial. There will be a jury trial or a bench trial. It depends on Mr. Alexon, what he wants. But Mr. Alexon has a constitutional right to a jury trial. He will have that trial. And before that trial, the government will provide him and his lawyers with all the documents, papers, and the evidence, lists of witnesses who are gonna be testifying, and so on and so forth. So he would have all that information, and it may have maybe a month or less before trial to kind of look over the information and then uh, prepare for trial. At trial, the government will present its case. The government will try to convince 12 people that Mr. Alexson did violate the law and that he was running a Ponzi scheme. That's what the government is saying. So that's the government's case. And then, of course, the uh, the defense will then have its opportunity to present its case 
to counterattack the government case, okay? So in other words, the government said the guy was running a Ponzi scheme, he was taking money from, from one guy to pay another guy. That's what the government says. I don't know if it's true. But if that is not the case, I would expect at least Mr. Alexson's attorney would have evidence to prove that the money that were being paid to those early investors or late investors actually came from investment, came from investing. In other words, those were return, return on investment. So if that's the case, then that would tend to show that he wasn't running a Ponzi scheme, that he was actually taking people's money, albeit without a license, but that's not the point. And he was actually investing that money and the money that he was paying those people who actually, the money he was paying them every week was actually from investment. That's really the quirk of the case. That's really where the case is. That's really what the government is saying. This case is not very complicated. I don't want people to think it's a complicated case. It's not very complicated. It's a very simple case where the government is saying, Mr. Alex and raised $250 million. He takes that money. He then invests it and get a return on the money. What he was doing every time somebody comes in and they invest more money, he take that person's money and pay early investors the 5%. That's what a Ponzi scheme is. If I haven't explained it, I think I've explained it before, but that's what it is. So I am waiting for the trial. Like I said, the trial will not occur probably until sometime early this summer because you know a lot of things are going to happen. There's going to be a lot of motion practice where the government is going to file motion. Uh, Mr. Alexander's attorney is going to file some motions and the judge is going to have to make a ruling, so on and so forth. So this case, if we're lucky, in other words, if everything, all things being equal, we may have to see, we may probably see a trial in uh, summer of 2023. If not, most likely uh, winter of 24. Of course, meanwhile, uh, Mr. Alexson's uh, freedom of movement uh, has been severely limited. Of course, he's on bail and uh, he has to report you know, every week to a uh, pretrial, which is part of the criminal process, the criminal procedure process with the federal government. So thank you so much for watching uh, the professor. And uh, I will continue reporting on this case, but I will also very soon, I will uh, uh, start a new, um, you know, a new program that I'm going to do where I'm going to start to talk about What's going on in the world? The world is uh, it's it's on fire right now with Russia, Ukraine, Taiwan, China, the South China Sea, Venezuela, and what's going on around the world. So we're going to be talking about and make sense of some of it. And interestingly enough, I'm also going to talk about the fact that during the part during the protest in Haiti, some people were raising Russian flag. I don't know where that come from, but this is something we're going to talk about. So anyway. Come back if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe to my channel thank you for watching and until next time with the professor